The TIE Fighter, short for Twin Ion Engine Fighter, is one of the most iconic starships in the Star Wars universe. It's closely associated with the Galactic Empire and the Sith, serving as the standard starfighter for the Imperial Fleet. This video provides a thorough and exhaustive examination of the different versions of TIE Fighters found within the Star Wars universe, ranging from the TIE Shuttle to the TIE Whisper. The animated content explores both the official canon and legends continuity, alongside various fan-made iterations, meticulously analyzing approximately 50 unique TIE fighter models that have been referenced throughout the franchise. Let's start with the TIE fighter, which was the standard Imperial starfighter seen in massive numbers throughout most of the Galactic Civil War and onward. The TIE fighter engine was one of the most precisely manufactured propulsion systems in the galaxy with no moving parts and was low maintenance. The lack of combat shields, hyperdrive, and life support systems, in concert with the advanced engine design, reduced the mass of the fighter and conferred exceptional maneuverability. This also made them both inexpensive and quick to replace. Equipped with upgraded ion engines and four blaster cannons, the TIE Interceptor is faster, more maneuverable, and better armed than any of its predecessors, and outperforms all other craft in a dogfight. The TIE Bomber was developed to take over the task of orbital bombardment from the Empire's capital ships. With its massive ordnance capacity, this formidable assault ship can be deployed against ground and space-based targets, delivering its lethal load with pinpoint accuracy. Vader piloted a TIE Advanced. It is a more capable ship than the standard TIE fighters, with a more sophisticated target tracking system and an augmented engine assembly fed by high-conversion solar cells on its bent wings, giving deadly speed and maneuverability. Unlike standard TIEs, it has both protective shields and hyperdrive capability. The TIE Advanced V-1 Starfighter was equipped with rudimentary shields and unique S-foils that could retract around the cockpit to save hangar space, in contrast to the X-1. Its design also stood out among other TIE models with solar panels located solely on the inside of the wings, while the outer surfaces were armored to enhance protection against lateral attacks from enemies. Undoubtedly, the TIE Advance V-1 represented a pioneering and innovative approach to starfighter design, earning it great esteem within the Imperial Navy. The TIE Defender represented a significant shift in starfighter design. This high-performance TIE series starfighter was equipped with a hyperdrive and deflector shields, enabling it to operate independently of Imperial capital ships. Its impressive speed and agility, along with its array of advanced weaponry, including four laser cannons and an optional tractor beam projector, made it one of the most advanced starfighters of its time. However, it departed from the design of previous TIE models, with three quadanium steel solar array wings mounted around an aft section, instead of the typical two parallel wings. The Defender's speed and agility were unmatched, making it one of the fastest starfighters in use during the Galactic Civil War. The TIE Dagger belonged to the TIE series of starships that had previously served as the preferred starfighter for both the Galactic Empire and First Order. It was armed with laser cannons located beneath the bulk cockpit, as well as two heavy laser cannons positioned between the solar collector wing and the suspended winglet. These cannons gave it a formidable advantage in starfighter combat. The ship featured a cockpit, two triangular-shaped wings with solar collectors, and twin ion engines. The TIE Heavy Starfighter, simply known as the TIE Brute, was used by the Galactic Empire, distinguished by its extra pod housing more powerful laser cannons. Unlike the regular TIE Starfighter, it was equipped with life support and a pressure-controlled cockpit. Kylo Ren's TIE Silencer was a TIE space superiority fighter used during the First Order's war with the Resistance. The TIE Silencer was noted for its speed and ferocity, as well as its laser cannons and missile launchers. It is also a longer ship, measuring about 17.5 meters or 57 feet in length, and comes equipped with a hyperdrive system, a deflector shield generator, and projector. The TIE Hunter is utilized almost exclusively by the Storm Commandos of the Galactic Empire, which results in its infrequent sightings. Due to the limited production of the craft and ongoing discussions within Naval Command regarding the implementation of weapons enhanced with the designs of their adversaries, the TIE Hunter is not employed beyond the Storm Commandos. The Imperial Light Armored Vehicle known as the Century Tank, 
or tie crawler, was an improbable amalgamation of two distinct vehicle types. Resembling a tie starfighter cockpit suspended between two massive tank treads, it was only capable of accommodating a single person who served as both the pilot and gunner. The tank featured a pair of medium blaster cannons and the customary chin mounts typically seen on tie cockpits. Additionally, a retractable light turbolaser position below the cockpit ball provided the tank with substantial firepower. The TIE AP-1, also called the TIE Mauler, was a ground assault vehicle utilized by the Imperial forces in the early years of the Galactic Civil War. As part of the TIE series and similar to the Century Tank, it was designed to provide the Empire with a swift ground assault option against the growing rebellion. The Mauler boasted three laser cannons and an advanced self-destruct mechanism, but its lightweight construction made it vulnerable to damage. Despite being designed for the war, it saw minimal action, and the Empire eventually replaced it with the TIE Crawler, which was based on its design. The TIE Vanguard represented a specialized iteration of the TIE Starfighter Reconnaissance craft. Much like its counterpart, the TIE Reconnaissance, it fell within the category of short-range vessels built upon the fundamental TIE Starfighter framework. Distinguishing features included the presence of substantial antennae linked to sensor arrays and communication apparatus extending outward from the cockpit sphere. The primary role of the Vanguard centered around conducting scouting and intelligence-gathering missions. Imperial forces often deployed this craft to acquire crucial information concerning the movements of enemy warships or fleets before committing to a full-scale engagement. The TIE Avenger represented the apex of a lineage of starfighter concepts that originated with Darth Vader's TIE Advanced X-1. It marked a departure from the Imperial preference for quantity over quality in starfighter design. It introduced key upgrades such as deflector shields, a hyperdrive, and warhead launchers. Additionally, it boasted remarkable speed and agility, surpassing any Imperial or Rebel starfighter. Much like its predecessor, the TIE Interceptor, the Avengers sported the menacing, dagger-shaped solar arrays at both its front and rear ends. The Mark VI Supremacy-class starfighter, or simply the Mark VI Interceptor, served as a fighter model employed by the reconstituted Sith Empire during the era of the Great Galactic War. This starfighter model was deployed by the Empire during critical engagements such as the attack on the Republic shipyards. The Mark VI prioritized speed and agility over defensive measures, as it had minimal shielding and a light armament. Notably, it lacked both proton and concussion missile launchers. Its strengths lay in its potent engines and rapid-fire laser cannons, enabling pilots to execute intricate swarm tactics with great effectiveness. Similar to the majority of TIE series starfighters, the TIE aggressor prioritized firepower and maneuverability at the expense of shields and armor. Its versatility made it suitable for a range of mission profiles, but its cost exceeded that of specialized fighters like the TIE Interceptor or the TIE Bomber, and its pilots demanded more extensive training. As a result, it was recognized as a hybrid between a fighter and a bomber among TIE models, remaining in an experimental phase with limited deployment. Furthermore, the TIE aggressors shared maneuverability characteristics with Y-Wing starfighters, and their lack of a shield generator made them susceptible to ambushes by rebel fighters. The TIE Reaper attack lander served as a troop carrier variant within the TIE Starfighter series. Primarily designed for the task of transporting elite troops swiftly to critical locations on the battlefield, the attack lander featured a distinct design with two streamlined, flat, pointed horizontal wings. These wings incorporated a large horizontal stabilizer position between them, which also functioned as solar collectors. The vessel was outfitted with essential protective features such as shields, ejector seats, and life support systems. It boasted sufficient consumables to sustain its crew for a period of up to five days. The TIE Experimental M3, nicknamed the TIE Warhead, stood as a pioneering member within the TIE series, representing a vital component of the broader TIE Experimental Project. One of the starfighters developed through an Imperial research initiative, the M3 exhibited a design closely resembling the standard TIE Interceptor. However, it diverged from the original blueprint by replacing the conventional laser cannons with a pair of warhead launchers affixed to the outer wing hubs. Hailing from the TIE Interceptor lineage, the M3 boasted near-identical performance attributes, with only marginal compromises in maneuverability 
and speed. The Emperor's Royal Guard TIE Starfighter represented a specialized adaptation of the standard TIE Interceptor model. These exclusive TIE Interceptors were exclusively piloted by the members of Emperor Palpatine's Royal Guard. Adorned with the unmistakable crimson-red hue of the Royal Guard, these formidable warcrafts struck terror into the hearts of any adversary they encountered. These alterations included the addition of supplementary flaps along the wing curves. It was believed that these fighters were commissioned directly by Emperor Palpatine himself. The Lancet Aerial Artillery, an Imperial airborne craft, drew its design inspiration from elements of both the TIE series and the Lambda-class shuttle lineage, fusing the paired cylindrical pods reminiscent of the TIE bomber with the flat, three-wing configuration characteristic of the Lambda-class shuttle. Lancets were equipped with a potent proton beam cannon situated centrally at the front of the fuselage. This positioning allowed for optimal targeting during air-to-ground assaults. Notably, the solar array typically found on TIE craft was seamlessly integrated into the tri-wing structure. The Lancet featured two anti-air systems for self-defense. The TIE Whisper underwent modifications tailored to the exact specifications of Supreme Leader Kylo Ren from the First Order, resulting in enhanced speed, range, and firepower capabilities beyond those of the standard model. Like other starships, it had a twin ion engine and its wings were solar collectors, which were similar in appearance to Ren's previous ship. It was equipped with four laser cannons located at the tip of each wing, five heavy cannons positioned between the two primary solar collectors on each wing, and a formidable heavy weapons turret boasting mag pulses and heavy lasers. Additionally, its round cockpit showcased striking red designs and featured an antenna at the rear. The TIE Mangler is engineered to embody nearly all the qualities one would expect from a starfighter. It boasts exceptional speed, commendable armor, robust shielding, and firepower potent enough to pose a significant threat to a wide range of adversaries. Its light turbo lasers are capable of vaporizing nimble light fighters, while in squadron formation, it can effectively chip away at larger capital ships, potentially leading to their demise over time. The TIE shuttle represented a specialized armored shuttle model produced on behalf of the Galactic Empire. Its primary purpose was to facilitate the transportation of Imperial officers along with a squad of stormtroopers between Imperial-class star destroyers. This shuttle configuration featured a distinctive two-pod layout. The starboard pod served as the cockpit, while the port side pod was dedicated to carrying passengers, safeguarded by robust armor plating. Positioned beneath each pod were deflector shield generators, a feature rarely seen in other TIE models. The wings of the TIE shuttle were intentionally designed to bend outward, meeting the specific requests of Imperial officers for a design that set it apart from the TIE bomber. The TIE Defender Elite represented a highly specialized variant of the renowned TIE, Defender, Multirole Starfighter. Its development took place in the year 1 BBY within the Galactic Empire's state-of-the-art facilities. In common with standard defenders, the elite model featured the characteristic three wings, powerful cannons, and a hyperdrive. However, it distinguished itself by its exceptional speed and even more robust shielding. With its unparalleled swiftness and agility, the TIE Defender Elite stood as a testament to Imperial's engineering prowess. The TIE Destroyer or TIE Protector was an experimental fighter developed in 13 ABY. It was incredibly expensive to manufacture, as it could act as a small smuggling freighter complete with a pod for storage, one for sleeping quarters, one for living quarters, and a hyperdrive. Only eight ever rolled off the assembly line, before the project was cancelled for its high cost. The TIE Assault Shuttle, or TIE Echelon, was a transport of the TIE line used by the First Order. It possessed four heavy laser cannons as well as a dual light laser cannon turret, was capable of delivering 12 crew members plus additional cargo, had two clusters composed of three ion engines each, as well as advanced sensors capable of monitoring and scanning enemy communications to allow them to avoid hostile encounters. The Death Seed, also known as Chardaki, is a distinctive starfighter primarily used by the Twi'lek species. This fighter was constructed using salvaged parts from both the TIE fighter and the X-Wing. To power its propulsion, the Death Seed utilizes the twin ion engines of the TIE fighter, 
while the X-Wing engines are used to fuel the lasers, hyperdrive, and shields. This combination results in a starfighter that is slightly slower than the standard TIE fighter but boasts better maneuverability. The TIE fire control carried only one laser cannon, as several sensors replaced the second laser cannon found on traditional TIE fighters. It was designed to be dependent on the precise targeting information provided by the starfighter, though large structures could still be destroyed without the TIE fire control assistance. The ship's primary purpose was to conduct reconnaissance on an enemy base, gathering crucial data and relaying it to the fleet. This information would empower fleet vessels to subsequently launch an assault on the base while avoiding detection by the enemy's defenses. Because of its importance, the craft was designed to be very maneuverable. Scimitar Assault Bomber had a streamlined, elongated body with a forward module that housed both the pilot and the gunner. This module could also function as an escape pod in the event of an emergency. The bomber's fuselage was supported by two large, elongated array wings on either side. To further enhance its maneuverability, the bomber was equipped with interlocked repulsor lift thrusters, which gave the bomber superior agility. The TIE Baron served as a TIE interceptor model that was utilized by the First Order. It possessed the hyperdrive, which was a modern technology that the First Order integrated into their more advanced models. Additionally, its crimson appearance implied that the abilities of its pilots surpassed those of the Special Forces TIE pilots, whose vessels only had a red stripe. The interceptor's arsenal comprised four laser cannons located on the wingtips along with projectile launchers that could release Magpulse warheads and concussion missiles. During the New Republic's battles in 10 ABY, the reborn Emperor Palpatine employed the TIE Automated Fighter, also known as the Drone TIE Fighter. This TIE Series Starfighter retained the standard TIE Series Command Pod, which featured twin ion engines and twin laser cannons but was enhanced with supplementary armor plating and rectangular wing panels that could be adjusted for pitch. The Starfighter incorporated rectangular solar arrays with a movable wing servo, which provided power to the generator. Unlike conventional TIE fighters, the drone TIE fighter was controlled by a droid brain, rather than a living pilot. The TIE Mining Guild Starfighters were modified TIE Space Superiority Starfighters that the Mining Guild was allowed to use due to its association with the Galactic Empire. In order to make the fighters clearly distinct from the ones in direct service of the Galactic Empire, they had a yellow color scheme. They also had a notch cut in their stabilizers, giving them only 8 solar collectors instead of 12, which gave them improved visibility, but greatly diminished their combat capabilities and maneuverability. The TIE First Order was designed to house a single TIE pilot aided by a flight computer, subspace communications antenna, sensor array and even a shield generator to create an onboard deflector shield. Advancements from the Empire included onboard deflector shields that provided better protection and offensive capabilities, improved solar cells, and higher capacity converters. However, like its Imperial predecessor, the TIE lacked a hyperdrive, making it dependent on carrier vessels for transport and limiting it to short-range missions. The First Order utilized the TIE Bomber series, which comprised of bombers featuring two central pods, one of which contained a cockpit, reminiscent of the Galactic Empire's old TIE bombers. The updated version of the bomber possessed notched wings akin to the original TIE interceptor, with a squared-off engine bank at the rear. The TIE variant was equipped with four solar collectors that doubled as wings, each with four laser cannons located on the forward tips. The experimental TIE Striker is a series of Imperial combat fighters that appear in the Star Wars anthology movie, Rogue One. Used by the Galactic Empire, the TIE Striker is twice as fast as the standard TIE fighters. A streamlined variant of the classic TIE fighter design, the TIE Striker is designed for atmospheric patrols over important Imperial ground-based installations. The TIE Oppressor Strike Starfighter is classified as a heavy fighter within the Imperial Navy and only Imperial Ace pilots are authorized to fly these gunships. They are equipped with two weapons pods and three ordnance bays, which compensates for their potential lack of maneuverability with overwhelming firepower. Notably, the TIE Oppressor features a unique dorsal third solar array and a larger mass than many other starships. The TIE Phantom, also referred to as a Phantom V-38, was a prototype TIE series starfighter developed by the Galactic Empire during the Galactic Civil War. 
A modified V-38 assault fighter was equipped with both deflector shields and a hyperdrive, along with a technology not seen for decades, a cloaking device. The fighter was designed for a crew of two, one piloting the vessel, while the other acted as a gunner and co-pilot. The TIE Raptor was a smaller variant of the standard TIE fighter. Like all TIE series craft, the Raptor had a spherical cockpit with an octagonal forward window, but rather than the usual large wings on either side, it had four short fins protruding directly from the cockpit assembly at right angles to one another. Although not as fast as a TIE interceptor, it was as maneuverable as an A-wing, and heavily armed, with four laser cannons and two concussion missile tubes. The Outland TIE fighter possessed wings that could fold when landing on a flat surface, making it easy to access the cockpit and giving it a unique appearance that resembled the X-Wing Starfighter's S-foils in an open position. Moreover, the landing gears were concealed inside the cockpit's underside, which made it more stable and user-friendly. Moff Gideon's personal Starfighter, the Outland fighter, was utilized by his Imperial Remnant during the New Republic era, with at least one being flown by the Moff himself. The TIE Experimental M1 was an experimental spacecraft developed as part of the TIE series. The M1 was a unique starfighter that consisted of a single standard TIE starfighter wing panel with two wing braces. It had a pair of standard TIE series cockpits, with the control systems located in the port pod and a heavy turbo laser in the starboard pod. The turbo laser on the M1 was significantly more powerful than the laser cannons installed on any previous fighter. Both pods had the trademark twin ion engines of the TIE series, and the fighter was actually slightly faster than the standard TIE Starfighter. The TIE Predator was developed as a successor to the outdated TIE Interceptor used by the Galactic Empire over a century prior. Despite its heavy armament and exceptional maneuverability, the Predator was unlike most TIEs in that it was equipped with hyperdrives and a deflector shield generated by its distinctive blade-shaped wings. These wings, similar to those of the Chiss Claw craft, could be repositioned for improved maneuverability. However, the advanced technologies integrated into the wings proved to be a significant maintenance challenge. At 24 meters long or 79 feet, the TIE Scout was one of the largest TIE variants, and it was distinctive in appearance, with a tall, elongated main fuselage behind the cockpit, flanked by large, bent-wing solar panels. Although slow and not very maneuverable by starfighter standards, either heavily armored nor heavily armed, it boasted an impressive suite of comscan equipment, and its enlarged hull could accommodate a crew of up to three, sometimes including a second pilot. The most notable feature of the TIE Scout was that it carried the most capable hyperdrive of any TIE variant. The Chiss Clockraft was primarily used by the Chiss Ascendancy, a powerful and secretive civilization. The cloak raft was equipped with a sophisticated cloaking device that allows it to become invisible to sensors and the naked eye. This makes it an excellent reconnaissance and stealth craft, as it can gather intelligence and conduct surprise attacks without being detected. The fuselage was based on the ubiquitous, ball cockpit, of the TIE series of Imperial Starfighters, with a Sinar ion drive pod mounted on the rear, but stemming from the junction of cockpit and drive pod were two pairs of curving wings which thrust out like an X-wing strike foils, and then extended forward in a claw-like grip around the cockpit. An ugly, also known as a Jew skin, was any type of starfighter that had been cobbled together out of parts that had been salvaged from varying origins, including crash starfighters and ex-military surplus. The ugly wasn't really part of the TIE series but does use many of the components from TIE technology. Many uglies during the New Republic era were amalgamations of parts from rebel and imperial craft and were used by gangs, pirates, and mercenary fleets. The TIE Experimental M4, also known as the TIE Bomb, was a guided missile based on TIE series technology. With wing panels taken directly from the TIE Bomber and a similar central pod and wing struts, the TIE M4 was loaded with enough explosives to detonate with five times the explosive force of a kamikaze TIE starfighter. The TIE Interdictor Bomber had wings and a command module that was nearly identical to those found on a TIE Bomber and TIE Heavy Bomber. However, the command module was flanked on both sides by a pair of ordnance pods, for a total of four. They could also include enhanced sensors. The ship was piloted by one individual 
and was equipped with shields, largely to ensure that their payload arrived at its destination. The armor was stronger than other TIE models, but the craft did not include a hyperdrive. The TIE interdictor was armed with link laser cannons and ordnance pods, able to carry 12 concussion missiles, or proton torpedoes. Lastly, there are also a few TIE fighters crafted by fans and different TIE variations that weren't made in the video. TIE fighters are primarily used for space superiority and dogfighting. They are agile and can quickly respond to threats. Their design philosophy is to overwhelm opponents with sheer numbers, making them a staple of the Imperial fleet. I hope you find this video informative and insightful, and let me know if you have favorite TIE fighters in the comments section below. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.